have this dated mug tree that I got from the free area at my local dump and I wanted to bring it. This is kind of an old kind of, I don't know, 80s, 90s looking thing. And I wanted to give it a primitive look. And I also wanted to add something to the top of it. And uh, I found, oh, this guy right here. I found this little rooster. I thought this would be fun to put on the top. It's a salt shaker, but I don't have the other half. It was, this was at the free shack as well. Um, I don't have the other half of it, the probably hen that goes with it. So uh, it's really cool. And I thought that putting it on the top here would give it a little bit of uh, a cool look instead of just being plain. You know, you could still use it. You can still use these. But I also want to make sure that it stays on there. So we're going to do a few different things to get this to stay. And I'm going to show you what I do. So I cut this dowel from just a scrap piece that I had. I used it to as a stir stick. So I cut this down and I'm going to screw a hole into the top of this to put this down in a little ways. And of course, my salt shaker has a hole in the bottom of it. So this is going to be able to go down inside and I'm gonna be able to put this half inside here and this one in here. It's gonna make it a lot more sturdy. There's gonna be a lot there to be able to um, like hold on it and glue so that it will stay. Okay, so I'm gonna take my peg and I got my hammer. Hammer that in. And then that should sit just right in there. Okay, perfect. So that's in, that's not coming out. Next, what I wanna do is fill this in with some clay. So actually, I have my glue out and a brush. And I'm gonna go inside here and get as much glue inside here as possible. So when I put my clay in, it will stay, you know, it will stick. Everything has good contact and is glued in really well. The other thing is I have these holes in the front for the salt. I'm going to try and get some of that glue down in there. Like so. Then I'm gonna open up this stuff, which is my air dry clay. And I'm gonna just fill in those holes. Because this will get painted. So once it gets painted, that'll fill right in. Now what I'm gonna do is take some of my clay and stick it in the hole. I'm gonna to have to use a dowel because I wanna get it up way inside, like in the head and in where my little dowel is gonna go on the top of my mug rack. So I just wanna pack, pack it up in there. So I'm gonna take a little bit of hot glue and just fill up the cavity with hot glue. And then, I'm gonna set this guy right on top. clear matte spray because it's shiny on there. I did sand it some, but it needs to be sprayed. This is shiny. I want this paint to stick.
so I've given this a good distress all over. Even the rooster on the top. Giving him a good distress, so a little bit of the color is coming through. I could do a little more, I guess. But I think that looks pretty good. So I found some new antique wax. This is Krylon Chalky Finish Antique Wax. I got this at Lowe's. Uh, it was had a special sale, so I figured I'd try it and see. It's a lot thicker than antique wax. But I wanted to give it a try, something different. I like to try new things out. First thing that I noticed is it has a terrible smell. It's very strong. Now that it's been, oh no, it's still really bad. Just so you know, that's very strong, very strong smell. So not a huge fan of that. Um, I'm just gonna take a little bit off the lid. I wanna see what it looks like on here. So this is gonna take the place of my antique wax that I use from Waverly. And I just want to give it a shot. It was inexpensive. I thought I would try it. It's supposed to give this a chalky finish look along with antiquing it just like the Waverly Antique Wax. You're supposed to read the directions, put it on with a brush, let it sit. It said for about one to two minutes, depending, I guess, on how much you want to stick stick around on there. So I'm just going to put it on all over just like this and get it on there. And I'm hoping that it takes those lighter colors and makes them darker, the ones that I, you know, the parts that I sanded off. It's been on there about two minutes. So I'm gonna start rubbing this off. It didn't darken it up as much as I'd like, but it did a little bit. It's a very cool aged look. I like the faded parts on the paint, uh, on the rooster. I think that looks cool. So, I mean, I guess it works, but it has a terrible smell. Terrible. scoops recently at a store local to me and they were only 99 cents so I picked them up. They are stainless steel but I'm going to try a trick and see if I can rust them up. Homemade. So I'm gonna just scratch it up so we can get down in and cause a reaction once uh, once I add the other ingredients, but this is going to soak in. I have a little bucket here. And I'm going to put these in once I'm done sanding them, and then I'll show you the ingredients I'm going to use to make a rust effect on these. I'm going to use these three ingredients to try and create a rust effect on those. I'm not sure it's going to work, um, but we're going to give it a shot. So I sanded the pieces down with some, I don't know, what is this, 80 grit sandpaper, and just caused a lot of scratches and scuffs, and I'm hoping that will help this concoction permeate through and create some rusting effect. So we've got peroxide, salt, and white vinegar, and I'm gonna pour it into this bucket here and try and cover these and uh, see if we can get these to just soak for a little while, a few hours, see what happens. It may take longer than that. I hope not, but I'm not really sure. I've done it before, but I've left it sit for days, so I'm not really sure how this is going to work. So 
you're supposed to put more peroxide in than anything else. So uh, two cups of peroxide. I don't have that much and I need to save some in case, well, in case we need it. So I'm just gonna pour in what I feel comfortable with. Who knows how much that is, like a cup maybe. And I'm gonna save a little bit in there so that I don't, until I can get to the store and get some more, um, I don't run this out. So here's some white vinegar. I'm gonna stick that in here. I have plenty of white vinegar, so I can, so um, I have plenty of it. I may flip this over. I want the, oh yeah, that fits really well. Okay, well, I do want the salt to be actually in the scoops. That's what's gonna show, so we're gonna do it that way. Okay, and then salt. Sorry I don't have actual amounts. I would say it would be a cup of peroxide, two cups of white vinegar, and I'm just gonna sprinkle the salt in, and I'm hoping it's just gonna sit if I don't touch this. It'll sit on certain spots and just start rusting. Now, who knows if this is gonna work. This is what it looks like. I've got them pretty much submerged, not completely, This these ends aren't. Um, and the salt is just sitting like on the different spots. All right, so these were up for over 24 hours in the, the mixture that I made and they did not rust. They got some pitting, I guess. So maybe that's the start, but I don't want to wait any longer for these guys. I mean, come on, just do it. I think you need muriat muriatic acid, they said, to break down the outside of the stainless steel, and then it would seep in and, and they would rust. Well, I don't have that, so and I don't have time to wait around. So I took it outside, sprayed it with my Rust-Oleum Clear Flat Spray because they're very shiny and um, I wanted to just kind of dull that down so that the paint would stick, because I am gonna paint these. I'm gonna give them a faux effect without using actual rust. My Woodwick by Fusion, and we're gonna give this a few coats so that it's covered all nice with this dark paint. I want it dark. I have my grubby mix here and my second coat's a little bit wet. So I'm just gonna take my grubby mix and just sprinkle it on while the paint's wet so it will stick, hopefully. And I have this one over here, same thing. So I was gonna put my grubby mix in just certain spots on these little scoops, but I think what I wanna do is put Spanish moss in here. So, uh, and I don't wanna to have to worry about covering up certain spots that I already had picked out for the grubby mix with the Spanish moss. So we're gonna just cover it a little bit here and there, and that's why I painted it dark underneath. So if it shows through, it'll be okay. And I'm just gonna leave these the way they are, just like that. So what I'm gonna do is put a hole in this part. I don't want it to go this way because I wanna be able to put something in here. So I'm gonna put a hole in the top so that it can be hung on the wall like this. And I can put still put my light in here, I think. If I rig it a certain way, maybe. I'll have to figure out a way, but I wanna be able to put a candle hang it up and put a candle in there. Maybe just a uh, ribbon around there or something like that and or some homespun material and that will hold it in. came 
out really good, I think. Nice and grubbied on the front. I got the hole so it can hang up on the wall, but I've got to make it so my candle can sit in that and not, when it's hanging on the wall, not fall. See how it's leaning? So what I'm gonna do is use my Spanish moss. Messy, messy, but it's one of my favorites to use for primitive rustic decor. So I'm gonna make kind of a little, I don't know, a little half circle type thing. We're gonna see if we can mold it here. I'm gonna put it right on the very edge of my little scoop here. So it's almost like a half a nest that's in there. Trim this a little bit. I like the flyaways, but I'll trim it just a little. Now let's try our little candle. Oh, that's all it needed. Just something a little extra sticking out over the edge. So it looks just like a half a, a half a bird's nest. I think that's so cute. So cute. And I'll do that to both. Okay, so I cut a pick off one of my, um, uh, one of my bunches of pit berries. It's just a uh, burgundy and mustard colored pips. And I'm just gonna twist them around because they're super long. See how long they are? Super long. And if you twist them and bunch them up, it makes them look fuller. And it doesn't look so scraggly like, like these do. This is a used like bunch of pit berries that I got and it's been worn. But when you break them down like this, you can kind of they don't look as bad, you know? And it looks fuller if you twist them up a little bit and just kind of squish them down. And then what I'm gonna do is, because the back of my scoop is grubbied and also my tea light is grubbied, I wanna add a little bit of something, a pop in the back to fill it in, of course, and to make it so you can see the light a little bit better. So what I'm gonna do is glue this in to the back of my scoop. Also to cover up the stem, I'm gonna take a little bit, I don't want too much because I don't wanna bunch it up in the back so my candle can't sit back there, but I wanna be able to cover up that stem a little bit and also give a little background for my candle a little lighter background so my candle shows up. There you go. You can play around with it and adjust them how you want. Like I said, this is a moving flicker candle. I have these on my Etsy shop, but you don't wanna get this in the way of your flicker. That just does not wanna cooperate.
Rustic Wednesday, but on Saturday, yep, that's what this is. It's a collaboration with host Dawn at Shabby Meets Bling and I, and several other creators that are going to be on this playlist for this collaboration. So make sure you check them all out. I'll have a link down in the description so that you can go watch all of their wonderful, creative, rustic, primitive creations. This is a camping, like a fire. Um, you can put popcorn in there, pop popcorn over your open fire, or um, chestnuts, or I don't know. You can put anything in there. Veggies, maybe. I don't know. But it's got a little handle. It slides up and, or down, and I think it slides up. Yeah, it looks like it was used a little bit. It's a little bit scuffed inside. But I gave it a quick clean out. And this is going to be a quick, easy little um, little makeover I'm going to do on this. I'm not going to paint it. I'm not going to do anything to it except for add a bow and a star, like maybe right here somewhere. And this can hang on the wall and just be some vintage decor that somebody can hang over maybe by their wood stove or by their pellet stove or just anywhere where they want a little bit of cool vintage look. So we're just going to give this a quick makeover. thinking with these holes in this I hope so now I can just take this set it in there and do this and it's ready to go like that I hope you enjoyed my primitive projects today. Let me know down in the comments if you had a favorite and which one it was. Don't forget to go down and check out that great playlist for Rustic Wednesday, but on Saturday. Have a great day.